Hello, this is Silverpaw Reads, and let's get right into chapter 13 of Spike. It was morning. Spike walked behind Sam, who every now and then discreetly glanced down at Spike's bandage left lower arm. When Sam had asked, Spike had lied again and said he'd burnt himself by dropping a kettle of boiling water while making dinner. To Spike's surprise, Sam had actually bought the excuse. Or so it seemed. Want to hang out together after school? Sam asked hopeful. Spike shrugged. I'll have to ask Uncle Chuck first. I hope he'll let you, Sam smiled. Yeah, me too. Spike allowed his mind to drift and started to think of everything and nothing. While Sam walked in front of him, humming on a song, Spike thought of his visit to the doctor. Thought of his fight with stupid Marco, thought of yesterday in the bathroom and if there would be consequences later today. Then presently, a flashback penetrated through his thinking and made him stop and shudder. What's the matter? Sam asked when he finally noticed Spike had stopped. He noticed his friend looked rather nauseous. N nothing Spike stammered. He tried changing the subject as fast as he could and asked Sam about what his father had said when Sam confronted him the previous day. He told me a bunch of lies, Sam said morosely. Really? Why would he lie to you? Spike asked. Okay, so maybe he didn't lie, but I find it really hard to believe he went to high school when he was 13 or something, and that 18-year-old mom would... You know, when he was that young and she didn't discover his age. I did see a picture of him from back then, and he did look mature for his age, but I mean, come on. That's ludicrous. He must be lying. Sam looked helplessly at Spike. Right? I don't know, Spike shrugged. I'd never think he was the kind of person who'd make up something like that. But hey, if you doubt him, why not ask Terrence if it's true? Yeah, Dad suggested that too, asking Terrence. Sam said and ran his fingers through his short hair. I think I'll have both Dad and Terrence telling me the whole story together. Then make sure you tell me the story afterwards, Spike carefully smiled. I'd really like to hear the story of your dad's life. Sam nodded happily. I will. They finally reached the school and split up, walking to their separate classrooms. Spike's day started off with gym and swimming with the boys from the C class, Sam and Marco's class. Spike didn't even consider attending. Of course he ditched Jim in swimming class, there was no way he was going to be in the changing room with all those other guys. He instead went to the bench close to one of the corners of the school building and sat down, looking up at the clouds again, thinking. He sat like that for half an hour, just looking up at the sky, then his gaze descended to the ground as a person moving towards him caught his attention. It was Marco, but he was alone this time. Hi, Marco said with a smug smile. Aren't you supposed to be at the gym, huh? Spike mentioned. I was about to ask you the same thing, Marco said and folded his arms, looking down at Spike. Spike just snorted. What do you care? Well, your boyfriend is there, so I thought you'd be there as well, Marco grinned. What did you say? Spike snapped. Sam, your little lover boy's waiting for you. Marco teased and tried to anger Spike. Spike was exasperated and clenched his fist so hard the skin on his knuckles turned white. Marcos dug his hand down in one pocket, trying to pull something out of it while he kept teasing Spike with gay comments of him and Sam. Spike didn't give him the chance to pull out whatever was in his pocket. He threw himself at Marco and punched him in the face. What the hell's your problem? Marco shouted and covered his face. You're my problem! Spike yelled at him. You've been after me all these years without reason. I'm sick of it. You and me, Marco, right now. Fight me! Fight you? Marco laughed and tried not to sound intimidated. He could see the rage in Spike's fuming eyes. It was like he was a totally different person. Marco had no intentions fighting him when he was like that. Come on, Spike shouted at Marco. Fight me, you coward. Blood dribbled from Spike's trembling hands. He looked wide-eyed at Marco, who lay motionless before him. Marco had answered to Spike's challenge and fought him. They fought more furiously than ever before punching, kicking, and biting, attacking the opponent with all their might. Marco looked terrified at first, but then he started enjoying the fight, even yelling things to enrage Spike even more. Spike was brimful of rage and fought viciously. Eventually, Spike managed to lead Marco in their fight behind the school building where no one could see them, where no one would stop them. Spike couldn't recall what happened next. He had blacked out somehow, blinded by rage. He remembered seeing a big pile of bricks stabbled nicely under a massive hole in the building wall and picked up a brick, striking Marco's face with it so he fell to the ground. The next thing he knew, he was sitting on top of Marco's belly to keep him down, Marco begging for mercy and Spike bashing his brains out with the brick. When Spike came to his senses, Marco was dead. His skull was cracked and there was this odd grayish fluid that ran out of the gap mixed with a massive amount of blood that flooded out. Marco's face was so covered in blood it was hard to tell where all the blood came from, but it seemed to be coming from all over his face, mouth, nose, eyes, ears, cranium, there was so much blood. 
Spike held the brick above his head, his hands shaking like crazy, and with an utmost terrified look on his face. He let the brick fall to the ground and watched in terror the ceaseless flow of red and tossed away the body when he, for the final time, came to realize Marco was dead. He was actually dead. Spike had killed him. He looked at the body again and noticed a piece of paper sticking out of Marco's pocket. Spike swallowed and then decided to pick it up. He didn't dare look at it, but quickly put it in his own pocket, shocked over the things he'd done, including stealing from a dead person, the person he'd just killed. Spike panicky looked around to see if anyone had seen him, then he forced his trembling legs to carry him as, carry him as he ran away from the crime scene as fast as he could. Sam was, as usual, the last one to leave the gym. Spike knew this and was therefore waiting for him on the corner of the building, close to the gym hall's exit. Sam was surprised when Spike suddenly appeared as soon as he'd opened the door, grabbing his arm and dragging him behind the building with him. Spike? What the? That was all Sam got to say before he quickly covered his mouth with both hands not to scream. Spike was covered in blood splatter, his lower arms dripping blood on the ground. There were blood stains on his face as well, but many of them were being washed away by the tears that streamed down his face. Spike! Sam tried to whisper, Spike, what on earth happened? Spike was gasping and sobbing, unable to say anything. He sat down on the ground, wrapped his arms around his knees, and wept. Sam put down his bag and sat down next to Spike with an arm carefully around his shoulders. Hey, Sam began, what's happened? He was still in a bit of shock from all the blood, but he tried his very best to remain calm. Beside, his best friend was crying, something he'd seldom seen him do. Sam wanted to comfort him. His best friend needed him. Spike! What happened? Sam carefully repeated. Spike was unable to answer. He could only cry. I, I, I need your cl clothes! Spike then finally managed to utter out after a while. Oh, yeah, of course! Sam said and quickly got out of his gym clothes from his bag and handed them over to Spike, who quickly changed into them, obviously ignoring his shyness. Then he poured some water from his bottle onto a towel so Spike could clean off the blood. We've got to get out of here, Sam. Spike snuffled. Why? School isn't over yet. I'll tell you why we walked, but we have to get out of here fast. They ran away from the school ground and into the forest from which they came. Spike was for the first time taking the lead running through the woods, with Sam running close after. Sam wanted to ask a lot of questions. Why were they running? What about their backpacks and belongings? What about the detention? They'd get even more if they ran away from school, just like that, wouldn't they? Finally, Spike stopped. Sam had been so focused on running, he hadn't paid any attention as to where they were heading, but now he saw they were closer to their old tree hut. Why are we stopping here? Sam asked, perplexed. Spike turned around to face him when nervously twiddling his fingers. There's something I've got to tell you. Sam waited patiently. I... Spike stopped, then he tried again, but found the words very hard to utter. I killed... Marco. He spoke those three words slowly. Sam's eyes gradually widened, but just before his face turned into a disturbed expression, he started laughing in disbelief. Why are you laughing? Spike asked, distressed. I'm not joking! I killed him! Sam's laughing stopped abruptly when he heard Spike sob and saw the tears stream down his face. You're serious, aren't you? Sam asked, stunned. Spike nodded and wiped away the tears, but despite his effort, they kept coming back. Oh my god, Sam nearly whispered, beginning to feel queasy. I didn't mean to do it, I... I don't know what came over me. <sighs> Spike said with a thick voice, trying to hold back his tears. Seeing Spike this troubled by guilt was heartbreaking. Sam wanted to help him, but he just couldn't believe Spike had actually killed someone. How did you kill him? Sam regretted having asked the instant his lips formed the words he really didn't wish to find out. With a brick. Spike managed to answer, then he remorsefully burst into tears again. Sam wasn't sure he could take any more details. The images already created in his mind was gruesome enough to have to watch. They made his stomach churn. Spike s slowly but surely stopped crying. He took a deep breath to calm himself and leaned his head back. He had a note in his pocket too, you know, Spike said and then looked up the tree in the tree crowns. He got out of the piece of paper from his pocket. Spike reached it out for Sam to read. Sam hesitantly took the paper, carefully uncurling it, and read the awfully familiar note. It's a heart with my name on it, Spike explained, revealing that he looked at it. What? If he was in love with me and I just killed him? Spike frowned. I don't think Marco was in love with you, Spike, Sam said low. Spike turned his head towards Sam. What do you mean? 
The note wasn't written by Marco, Sam flushed. How do you know that, Spike frowned. Sam took a deep breath and he said it. Because I'm the one who wrote it.